Hello and welcome back to my channel where I talk a little bit about theatre, a little bit about being a PhD student and a little bit about those two things uh, smushed together. Um, so today, uh, in response to a number of requests down in the comments of a few of my other videos, I wanted to talk a little bit about research proposals. <laughs> So whether you're applying to do um, a PhD or potentially partway through um, a master's project or looking at um, a research project slightly further ahead than that, a research proposal is something that you're likely going to have to write somewhere along the way. Essentially what it is is a document uh, that sets out what you're trying to achieve with a particular piece um, of research that you're suggesting that you want to do. Now this is something I've only done a couple of times myself so this is in no way um, a video in which I'm professing to be an absolute expert at this subject but I wanted to kind of let you in on my process for writing my PhD proposal in case you are thinking of applying to a PhD program um, or potentially are partway through a master's project and have to do a research proposal as part of that. So when I first set out to write my PhD proposal, I essentially put it under three different headings. My first one was the research objectives, my second one was my background knowledge and context, and my third section was methodology. After that there was also an addictive bibliography which we'll talk about in a little minute. So the first section was research objectives and essentially what this is is setting out what I was looking to achieve with the piece of research that I'm currently doing. And in many ways lots of these things have shifted slightly since I actually started doing the research because sometimes you can't predict what you might find out until you actually start doing the project. But in this section I took a couple of different approaches to laying out what I wanted to achieve at that point in time. So although there is definitely an argument that a PhD proposal or research proposal is an opportunity to set out how good you are at writing. I also chose at the very very beginning of mine to set it out in bullet point what I was looking to achieve with my PhD project. So I put down four bullet points which broadly outlined some of the things I was hoping to explore, analyse or find out during my research. I then followed this up with a whole lot um, of context which really aims to suggest why I was the best person to do this research project and why it might be important. If this is something you're looking to develop kind of skills doing then I'd maybe suggest looking at my last essay tips video where I looked at a little bit about how to really kick off an essay. But in using both bullet points and then a more prosaic form, what it meant was that I'm quite aware that people that look through these proposals probably look through an awful lot to try and shortlist down to the people that they might interview and then to kind of whittle it down even further after that process. So by using bullet points essentially what you're doing is making that person's job a little bit easier for them and as well as having that in-depth prosaic bit where you show off your writing skills and really explain in depth why you want to uh, find out these things that you've bullet pointed, the bullet points just kind of give them the headlines and just really set out nice and simply what this research project is aiming to do. The second section that I laid out was background knowledge and context and so within this I was aiming to a show that I'd done a little bit of reading around this area already and knew kind of what direction the field was going in um, as well as what some of the key texts were but also in doing that I'm also setting out again why this research project is really really important. So there was bits where I'm setting out that there is a particular gap in uh, knowledge somewhere that I can fill in. But I'm also pointing out where in the conclusions to an article or a book um, another scholar might have suggested that more work needed to be done on a particular subject. Here I'm aiming to point out bits of literature that I agree with and will be using to reinforce my argument or to guide my research but also looking to point out some uh, bits of literature which I slightly contest. In showing that you're aware of the literature that also exists this area very much works in tandem with the indicative bibliography which I'll talk about in a moment but while the indicative bibliography tends to be more of just a laying out of different references that you might use um, this is a, a chance to really show that you understand those works not that you've just managed to do a Google Scholar search and uh, write them out in a list but that you've read through a few of them and have started to get a grasp on what the fields that you're looking to kind of put your two pence into uh, and you've kind of got an understanding of that. 
Thirdly was the section methodology, in which, broadly speaking, I set out how I was going to do my research project. Now this is a really important um, part of any proposal, because it shows that you've not just got a passion for this subject, you've not just done a little bit of the reading, but you've also got an idea of how you're going to go about uh, undertaking this research project. Uh, a PhD is three years, which uh, in some ways feels like a very, very long time, and in others feels like a very, very short amount of time. Um, so this is just an area in which you can set out that you've thought about how those three years might play out or however long your research project is. So for example I set out that um, for the first nine months I'd probably mostly um, be delving into a lot of the existing literature to further kind of iron out where my research was going to sit and how I was going to add new knowledge uh, to the field. And then there's about a year in which I said I was going to go and do field work which has has largely corresponded to how I've actually done my um, research project, but it's worth pointing out that this can change after you start. Finally, any research proposal is going to involve an indicative bibliography, and essentially what this is is a list of references which you might use in your final research project. And this final section very much takes place in conversation with the earlier background knowledge and context section. The trade-off being that in the earlier section you can go into a few sources in real detail and really show that you've um, understood those um, and maybe criticised them a little bit or maybe suggest how they might shape your research project. In this section, however, all you're really able to do is list them. This means that you're able to include a much wider range of work within your indicative bibliography, but that you can't really go into it in any detail whatsoever other than listing it. It's worth making sure that within this section you've both got some really up-to-date sources to show that you're on top um, of current research in your field and you can see where it's heading at the moment and in the near future, but also that you make sure that you've included some of the really foundational texts within your field, which might be slightly older, but will naturally be just as important to your research project. In summary, I'd like to say that doing a research proposal, whether you've kind of got to do one or whether it's just as an exercise um, in order to kind of set your mind in the right direction for undertaking a bit of research, is a really, really useful exercise. It makes you think about exactly how you're going to do this piece of research, as well as start to work out what direction, what literature you're going to um, need to read and what um, kind of directions your project might go in. But a big thing that I'd always remember is this is the start of research journey, it is not the end of one. So you're not expected to make any big conclusions, you don't necessarily have to have some kind of big hypothesis, although you might have um, an idea as to why you're exploring the thing you are um, and where that research may head. The proposal then is very much an opportunity to lay out exactly how you think it might happen at this point. It doesn't mean these things aren't changeable as your project goes forward, it's just just to prove that you are capable um, of planning a project to the detail um, that is required. Thank you very much for watching. I'm sure I've left a lot of questions and a lot of open ends in this video. If you've got any more um, kind of things you want to throw up, then please do put a comment below um, and I'll do my best to get back to some of those. And I'm sure some of the other wonderful people that watch these videos will also um, kind of chuck in their thoughts because that's always really useful. It's always great when these videos are a start of a conversation um, rather than the end of one. Um, but thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed, then please do consider subscribing um, or give this video a thumbs up. Uh, thank you very much and I will see you soon.